Hi, I'm Dr. Kathleen Sameo from Hearing Solution Centers here with Dr. Brooke Bernson, and we are here today to talk about audiology myth busters. Coming right up. So <laughs> we've got a couple of different myths in our field of audiology. We're just gonna kind of go through them, um, debunk some of them, and just tell you what the actual truths are when it comes to some of these myths that you'll, you'll hear throughout our industry. All right, so one of the major myths that we hear often is that surgery will fix my hearing loss. And in fact, we have a lot of people come in and they're just surgery. They wanna fix it and they wanna move on. Um, and it's actually not quite that simple. Right, so um, there's a couple of different types of hearing loss that we have. Two of the big ones are what's gonna be called a conductive hearing loss. That is something that if we tend to see that here in the office, um, we'll refer you out because medically it can you can possibly have surgery and it'll help with that loss. Um, the other type of hearing loss that we tend to see quite a bit is what's called sensory neural. Um, that's probably more so a majority of what most people have. That type of loss is unfortunately considered a permanent loss and surgery won't help fix it. And that's where we come in and we can help with recommending hearing aids um, to see if that helps you better with some of your speech understanding and things like that. Yeah, so I think, I think when we looked it up, it's actually saying about only about 5% of hearing losses can be fixed surgically. Um, so the greater majority of them, we really are looking more at other ways of trying to deal with right. that. Um, the next one I thought was really funny because I, I actually hear it. It's um, hearing aids will make me look old. And so I would rather just try to hide my hearing loss. And that is always, if we have some, a family member within um, the office at the time, every time a patient says that, the family member just kind of chuckles or it's like, oh no, you can't hide your hearing loss. Um, the fact of the matter is most people will notice it before you right? Um, because you're always saying, huh, and what? Or you're misunderstanding what people are saying all the time. So if someone is saying, you're not hearing me, you're not listening to me or something like that, you're not hiding it and it's not something that you can really fake very well mm -hmm. um, and so I always think it's kind of funny how people think that they can hide it or they're so reluctant to admit that they actually need hearing aids that they're doing other things that make it ridiculously more evident right. um, I even had a gentleman one time um, I tried calling him got his voicemail and his voicemail actually said I need you to speak slowly and clearly so that I can understand you. And then when I actually met the gentleman, he showed me that he had made little business cards that say, I'm not understanding you very well. Could you please speak up? And he was handing those out to people, but he thought he was hiding the fact that he had a hearing loss. And I thought that was so funny because I thought you're, you're literally announcing it to everybody. Um, well, and I even had a gentleman in the other day who, um, he said, my hearing's fine. I don't have any issues or trouble with it. But he also let me know the gal in his retirement facility, she tells him how to appropriately answer questions and how to respond. And I then indicated that to him, like that she is being your ears. And he was like, you're right. She is being my ears. So yeah, he wasn't hiding it very well either. Yeah, I think, you know, if you have enough that you're noticing it, I can pretty much guarantee people who are close to you, they've already known and yeah. they've known longer than you have. Yeah. So that's a big one. Uh, yeah, the next myth that we have is I'm not old enough to wear hearing aids or to have a hearing loss. Um, and also from some of our research with that one. So hearing loss does not matter if, you know, what gender you are, how old you are, what religion you are, it affects everybody all across the spectrum. Um, and actually only 33% of hearing loss is found in patients over the age of 65, which is what most people tend to think when they think hearing loss, it's for those older adults, not for people who are my age and younger. 
And I right. did work with pediatrics in the schools. So I know a lot of kiddos who, who have hearing loss. So. Oh. And so we had actually found that uh, it's showing about 8 million people between the ages of 18 and 44. So that's actually quite a bit. Yeah. And there could be a lot of reasons behind those numbers. It's, you know, it's not going to be the same for everyone. But we are not able to look at someone and say, oh, you're 55, you're fine. That's, that's not a thing. And hearing loss isn't, I mean, it can be caused by a number of things. It's not only just, you know, you're getting older, but uh, blow dryers can create hearing loss, driving with your car windows down, certain medications. So there's lots of factors. And a big one nowadays is everyone's walking around with earbuds in their ears. And if the person sitting next to you can hear the music in your ears, it is too loud and more than likely you are causing damage to your hearing. Yep. So, yep, no age limit here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next one we have, it says, it doesn't matter where you buy hearing aids from, the cheap ones are just as good as the expensive ones. That's a really good one. Um, one of the things that I, you know, when patients will come and they'll ask me this and they'll say, oh, well, I have this hearing aid and it's a lot cheaper. And Sometimes they want me to answer that question, but I know they already know the answer. And so I always will just ask them right back, why do you think it's so cheap? And there's usually, I get a lot of answers within that. Um, but typically if there's a big variety in pricing for anything, mm -hmm. there's going to be a reason. So they're typically not going to be the same thing. Or if they are, you're typically going to exchange that for maybe a reduction in services okay. or not working with the person who's necessarily qualified to do it, or maybe not working with anybody at all and you have to deal with everything on your own. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're truly comparing apples to apples, typically pricing on hearing aids is, is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. So if you're noticing a big difference, your first question should be why? And I can guarantee you, no one's gonna say, oh, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, It's just not the way it's going to be. So we've got another one here that says, I don't need hearing aids because I still have one good ear. And that may be true. We may, you may have a loss kind of on one ear and a normal hearing on the other side. And we might not necessarily recommend getting a hearing aid for that ear. Um, but even a couple weeks ago, I did fit somebody who, actually I fit two people who have normal hearing in one ear and um, a loss in the other. Both of them noticed a difference with having that hearing aid on, um, and that's something they want to try and, and see if it helps. And sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't, but it doesn't hurt to try it out. Yeah. You've got your trial, so. One of the things I've also noticed a lot of times is when you have hearing loss, your perception of what a normal right. or a good ear um, it is sometimes off. And so a lot of times I'll have patients will both say, oh, my good ear, my good ear. And we'll come to find out they have a severe hearing loss yeah. in, in the good ear. And then this ear is profound. So just because it's better does not mean that it's good. Right. Just the same as if I was in a car wreck and I mangled one arm and this arm's broken, I wouldn't say, oh, it's fine. This is good. It's not good. It's broken. We still fix it unless it's truly good and only a test is going to be able to tell you that for sure i like this next one it says um hearing aids are noticeable and embarrassing they are big and clunky so i mean a couple different things with that they can be noticeable if you want them to be and even then i don't even still think they're that noticeable we we did a video last week um where it was a, um, I don't think we were trying to figure out like whether you wanted a skin color one or, yeah. or a colored one. And um, Dr. Our, Young, would you rather, yeah, right? Dr. And, Young wears the red ones. Right, and we both indicated we would rather have bright and colorful ones. But even with some of the bright and colorful ones, patients and family members and stuff like that still don't even notice the hearing aids. So just because it is colorful doesn't mean it's noticeable. Um, like we also talked about last week, you can match hair, you can match skin. And the hearing aids that we have today, a lot of people compare them to their grandparents' hearing aids. 
they are not your grandparents hearing aids we were just talking about this at all they are definitely different in terms of technology they are different in size you know they used to have body aids and we don't wear body aids anymore um yeah. so they're they're fairly fairly small. I think a lot of time anybody that comes in and is worried about the size of the hearing aid, as soon as I pull one out and show mm -hmm. it to them, they're always like, oh, is that it? You yeah. know, they're really surprised because they do. They have that idea of, oh, my mother wore this, my grandmother right. wore this. Or I even just remember when, you know, when I was in elementary school, I, I went to school with a little boy and he had the body aid and it was like a full strap thing. And then the wires. And if, if that's all you've known, then you're going to make that assumption, but be a little open-minded, take a look at them, and I, I think you'll be surprised. And we have some old ones actually on display in our front. So if you wanna see what the size of an old hearing aid is versus like the new ones we have, we, we can show you yeah. the, the difference, so. All right, so the next one we have, um, it just says, I've tried hearing aids before and I didn't like them, so I will never try them again. Yeah, so <laughs> that one sometimes happens if um, if they've been programmed improperly or something like that, um, where people will buy hearing aids, and or you may have only gotten one adjustment, you never went back to your provider, and you just decided, nope, these aren't for me, and you put them in a drawer, and you never saw them again. Um, you know, you didn't really give it a fair shot to start with. Um, and I usually tell people it, it definitely does take practice and patience when getting used to a new hearing aid. Um, and it also sometimes depends. Some people, you know, they do buy some of the cheap things like amplifiers. An amplifier is not the same thing as a hearing aid, but they'll associate it with that. And then they think this didn't work for me. I won't, I won't go and get an actual hearing aid. Yeah. We try to focus a lot in our office. Um, it's kind of that basic three-legged stool analogy where the patient is just one of one part of that leg. So if you if you're committed to wearing a hearing aid and committed to giving it a good shot, we also have to have a provider that's able to provide those services and communicate with you and see all that what's going on. And then you also have to have a hearing aid that's going to be able to meet all of those specific needs that you have to help you meet your goals. So if any of those fail, you're not going to be successful with hearing aids. Right. And it could be with changes in hearing aids or with some different things there that maybe those goals, goals can be met now. So the situation might have a very different outcome. Right. So that's always good. Let's see, we did that one. All right, um, my hearing aids will restore my hearing back to normal. That is always a really fun one. Um, Unfortunately, that's not exactly the way that it works. Um, I know a lot of people like to make that comparison to glasses, which in some ways is really good because um, it, it does, you know, even glasses don't act exactly fix your, your vision. As you can see, we both are wearing glasses today. Yeah. Um, when we take our glasses off, our eyesight goes back to how it was without it. Yep. And I need mine in order to see. This is not for aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. But I think another thing that kind of takes it a step further that makes it very different for glasses is that we are not dealing just with how your ears hear, but we're also dealing with how your brain processes things and personal choices. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think too many people go back to their optometrist and complain that they see too well or that they're seeing too much or that they only want to see people's faces but nothing else. Yeah. Whereas in our field, we hear kind of stuff like that all the time. They say, I, you know, I'm hearing the noise or I only want to hear people speak, I but I don't birds, want to hear anything else. I no else. longer want to hear the birds in my house. Right, so, so yeah. it's a lot more complicated than that, um, especially because a lot of how we process sound can't be measured. And I actually use music as an example um, your taste in music is not going to change with your hearing. If I suddenly put hearing aids on you, you're not going to decide, oh, by the way, now I like country. That's not going to happen. And so what the brain wants and the, what, what the brain likes is a bit of a learning process for us as much as it is for you. Um, so that can take a little bit longer. Right. And even though we, we can't give you back the, you know, perfect hearing, we can definitely improve it which can also help improve your quality of life. It can get you back out, you know, doing the things that you loved and enjoyed 
you know, before. So yeah. Um, hearing aids are too hard to adjust to. Um, that's kind of a fun one. I think that's a little bit different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that it, there's a lot of things that play a role. Number one would be is how long you've had a hearing loss. If you have had a hearing loss for years and years and years, it's probably going to take you a lot longer to adjust to those sounds right. because you spent so long in quiet. And kind of like I said, they do take practice and patience, so getting used to putting them in. But it's the same thing like, you know, when getting new glasses. When I first got these, they're definitely bigger than my old ones. My prescription had also changed. And it took me going back to the optometrist a couple of times for them to adjust it, for them to really feel comfortable on my face. It also took me a little bit of time to get used to the prescription. At one point, I felt like I was in a fishbowl. Um, and so again, we do some more tweaks and adjusting, but I didn't give up on them. So that's the thing is, you know, you kind of push through, keep wearing them. And then eventually your brain says, oh, I like this. This is comfortable or this sounds nice. I like this. I so. think a lot of it too has to do with just a person's attitude. We have some people that come in and are very, very excited to hear things. Um, our, one of our favorites, we had a little girl and, um, her dad came in and the whole time during the appointment, she's doing this and you could tell dad was getting really agitated and finally he was just like w what are you doing and she goes do you hear that and she was listening to her clothing brush up against her chair and she was so excited to hear that sound whereas we and may she have also just is hearing loss on one side right she does she yeah. just has one yeah um but at the same time we could have another patient in that same situation and be like do you hear that Oh, I don't like it. Turn it off. I don't want to hear that. And that, so that, there we go again, back with the idea that the brain is going to hear all these things and some people may like it and some people may not. Mm -hmm. You know, with our, our little girl, she was so excited to hear everything. She's going to adapt really quickly because her brain is seeing this as a good thing. Yeah. And for other people who automatically see it as a bad thing, that's immediately telling the brain, this is bad. Turn it down. Turn it off. I don't like it. And the more we don't like something, the more we're going to kind of reject it. So it can take a lot longer for the brain to adapt to those and things. And I tend to tell patients, it's kind of like you've been walking like this for years, just plugging everything up. And now I've, you know, pulled your hands away. So some things the brain's going to be like, ooh, what's that? And you'll be like, oh, it's, you know, the faucet is dripping. And then eventually you say, the faucet is dripping, but it's not where my brain is automatically going to go to. Yeah. So things do do kind of mellow out. Yeah. All so. right. So the last one we have here is my primary care physician would have detected if I had a hearing loss. So this one, I actually do remember we had a, a questionnaire that came through, I think from um, after one of our continuing education courses that was asking people about physician referrals and things like that. Um, and they found out that, you know, a lot of physicians, some of them, what was it, like only 14% of the time will actually just do a basic screen. And I feel like most of our referrals that we get from a physician, they just kind of notice something in the office with the patient and that, you know, maybe they heard them out in the hallway earlier and they're like, ooh, we should probably get their hearing checked. And that's how we tend to see them. But, um, you know, even just a really mild hearing loss can actually be missed in a very basic screening. So mm -hmm. that is, you know, we usually like, they used to say every year, at least every two years or so, come in and just healthy hearing. Get your hearing checked um, by an audiologist and just kind of stay on top of it. Yeah, because I think especially within a physician's office, if they're not doing a full screening, then since we're typically going to be in a quiet environment, face to face, I would say most mild, even moderate mm -hmm. hearing losses would absolutely be missed unless they're specifically looking for that, which typically that's not why you're there. So, and like we said earlier, I mean, hearing loss tends to be found more so in people between the ages of 18 and 44. And at that range, a lot of people, um, I know I've never had my hearing checked before at my physician's office. I've got a twin sister. She does have a hearing loss. Um, and I don't think hers was, has ever been checked by a physician either because it's enough that you can get by. Right. You know? 
you can so they don't think the about blanks, it. So. Yeah. So those are the main myths that we've come up with here in our office. If you have any more, um, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you as well. Um, and then be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to hear a little bit more.